me that green light Give me that green light name Give me that green light Give me that green light name Give me that green light Give me that green light name Give me that green light Give me that green light name Tonight's Green Light Maine is sponsored by Bernstein Shore, celebrating 100 years. Thanks for joining us for the debut of Green Light Maine, a celebration of the talent, grit, and creativity of Maine's most promising entrepreneurs. This show is dedicated to bringing together the resources to help them succeed and to help all of you at home who also have big ideas. We've got vital information at our website, greenlightmain.com, and a vibrant community on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Together, we are building Maine's future, one dream at a time. I'm Don Gooding with the Maine Center for Entrepreneurial Development and the Maine Angels, and I'll be your host for this evening's show when two entrepreneurs go head-to-head -head in front of a panel of judges for a chance to win $100,000 in cash. Now, let's meet tonight's distinguished panel of judges, all of whom represent organizations who are great resources for Maine's entrepreneurs. At the far end, we have Des Fitzgerald, who is entrepreneur in residence at the Maine Venture Fund and has also got a couple startups under his belt. Des, great to have you here. Nice to be here. Thank you. It's... it's uh... Greenlight Maine feels like a part of a larger trend to me, where this state is gaining some strength and energy around entrepreneurism it's and startup business. Definitely exciting. And in the middle, we have Nancy Stroney, who is president of the Portland chapter of SCORE, where you've been for the last five years or so after a great career in marketing at Procter & Gamble. Well, thank you, Don. We're excited to be here. As you know, SCORE sees many, many of the companies in Maine that start up. And this is just an example of bringing the best of the best together. And finally, representing our sponsor, Bernstein Shore, Tony Perkins is the head of the intellectual property and tech practice at the firm. Great to have you here, Tony. Thanks, Don. It's great to be here. We're really pleased to be able to help sponsor Greenlight Maine and help those next successful Maine companies thrive. And the next one, the first presenter of the evening, will be here right after this break here on Greenlight Maine. One of the things I think that's most unique about Bernstein Shore is this uh, drive to do what's right for clients. It is a really kind of a constant mantra around here. We have a lot of very intelligent, hardworking, thoughtful attorneys. But I think what makes us different is our creativity, our focus on results. I think for a client, when your lawyers are willing to work really hard together, they're guaranteed to get a better solution in the end. Please visit greenlightmain.com to follow the progress of your favorite entrepreneurs and find information and resources about becoming an entrepreneur yourself. Welcome back to Greenlight Maine. It's a good time to get hashtag Greenlight Maine ready so you can comment on our first presentation of the evening. We have with us Jennifer Sism and David Koritz from Good to Go. You're good to go. Thank you. Good to Go is the first line of all natural dehydrated meals made for backpackers, campers, basically anyone on the go. I began cooking professionally over 20 years ago in New York City, and I owned one of the best restaurants in New York. With my business partner, Anita Lowe, we went on Iron Chef in 2005, and we beat the Iron Chef, Mario Batali. So I met Jen eight years ago here in Maine, and when I did, I introduced her to the outdoors, one of my passions. And day trips quickly turned into overnights and week-long trips, and Jen loved everything about it except for the food. So this New York City chef, now turned outdoors girl, started dehydrating her favorite meals for us to take backpacking. And they were absolutely fantastic. And so we looked at the market, and there's such a void for healthy meals, especially for active people. So Good To Go was born. Good To Go is different from the competition. Our meals are all natural. I use fresh vegetables, 
we toast and grind our own spices. I'm a chef, not a food scientist. I work in a kitchen and not a lab. The four meals that we offer right now are the award-winning Thai curry, mushroom risotto, smoked three bean chili, and classic marinara and penne. All you need to do is add boiling water to the bag, stir, wait 20 minutes, and you're good to go. The response has been absolutely fantastic. Backpacker Magazine gave us the Air Choice Award for the Thai curry about three to four months after we started sales, and that was in April of 2014. We sold 162 meals that month. Since then, we've, we're selling 10,000 meals every month right now. Both stores like e Eastern Mount Sports and REI are telling us that they're selling through two to three times faster than the competition. Uh, I talked to a sales staff recently at EMS, and he watched a customer grab a bag to get to go and was walking up to the counter and then turned back and picked up 10 more bags for a strip. They literally can't keep it on the shelves. The market is huge. The Outdoor Industry Association reported in 2014 that 1.8 billion meals were eaten outdoors that year. That's just camping and backpacking. We haven't even touched the adjacent markets of fishing, hunting, boating, sailing. Clearly, we need to make a lot more food. Well, Jen does, not me. Last year at this time, it was just her and I. Since then, we've added eight new employees to help us with everything from cooking to shipping to a part-time CFO. And we've currently maxed out the facility that we're in. In the fall, we're going to build an addition, 1,400 square feet, to increase production three to four times. And that's probably going to carry us through for maybe a year. When we get our production up to speed, we can also go into other markets of lunches at work, quick meals at home, travel vending. We've already been approached by Whole Foods as well as airport vending companies. The potential is huge. We love being here in Maine. We want to grow here in Maine. We want to hire more Mainers, and we also want to feed the world. Great job. Tony, first question. The question that immediately comes to mind is scale and, and scaling your sales and uh, expanding your distribution network. How do you see that happening? Right now, we could just increase sales two to three times just fulfilling the current demand with our current retailers that we're in. The next step after that would be adding more product. Every store out there is telling us that they're going to cut our competition skews in order to bring more of our product on board. Nancy, question. So tell me the difference between dehydrated and freeze fried. Freeze. Freeze dried. Fr yeah, freeze you got dried. It. <laughs> so <laughs> freeze drying, the product, the ingredients are taken down to minus 30 centigrade. Then the vapors are sublimated out or vacuumed out. I cook the food completely like you would at home, and then put it into dehydrators. And so it's hot air and wind dehydrate it. The difference of reconstituting is our food comes back with chew and texture. Because of the freezing, it breaks down the cell structure. So freeze-dried food inherently comes back mushy or porridge-like. Des, question hey, from you. Nice job, both of you. you. I'm, I'm curious about the category that you're in, uh, the outdoor camping category. How big is it? Is it growing? Tell us more. Well, it, it's, a, it's a large market. Um, it, the Outdoor Industry Association, who I quoted, does an annual report. Um, and the, the sales is well into the hundreds of millions. But this, we started with this because this is what we were doing. I was just making it for us. It wasn't something that we were doing a product for. And then we realized that this is a good market to start. Because if you start with everyone that eats, it's a little big. So we dialed it down and then we're gonna grow that way. Okay, well, we'll have a discussion with our sponsor of the evening, Bernstein Shore, when we come back from this break here on Greenlight Maine. It doesn't take much to change your entire travel experience. It's more than a flight, it's the whole trip. Connect your world with daily non-stop flights to Atlanta, Detroit, Chicago, Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, Baltimore, Charlotte, and New York City. Portland International Jetport. Way better. We develop websites for businesses of all sizes and devices of all shapes. We develop website strategies for connecting with prospects to cultivate more business. We develop websites that are simple to use and easy to update, putting the power in your hands. 
all backed up by a marketing team here in Maine, ready to help your business grow. Sutherland Weston, SutherlandWeston.com. Welcome back to Greenlight Maine for a conversation with our sponsor of this evening. With us here in the studio is Tony Perkins with Bernstein Shore. Uh, at Bernstein Shore, uh, you are not only co-chair of the business practice, but also you have an intellectual property and tech practice. So, Tony, great to have you here. Nice to be here, Don. Thank you. So one of the things I think most entrepreneurs probably don't realize is that attorneys actually have to have a lot of knowledge about the businesses of the clients they're working with. You want to talk about that a bit? Yeah, the, sometimes uh, we talk about it in our practice group meetings that it's sometimes difficult to separate the, where the business uh, piece ends and the law begins because many of the issues that we face are really the results of a business issue that you've uh, encountered. Mm -hmm. So in Bernstein Shore as a whole, how many business attorneys are there and, and what kind of specialties do they have? We have approximately two dozen business attorneys, five paralegals, and that covers a range from intellectual property and technology to hospitality, automotive, financial services. So think of any industry segment or industry vertical, mm -hmm. and we cover probably most of them. A lot. And you've been building to that for a long time. I understand it's your 100th anniversary. It is, yes, 100 years uh, this September. And uh, we're, uh, we're amazed, frankly. It, yes. <laughs> it, well, congratulations on that. And I think you're also up over 100 attorneys for 100 years. We are. Great. We are. So we're going to learn more about Bernstein Shore in a video uh, right now. Bernstein Shore is an innovative business law firm that has three offices. Portland, Maine, Augusta, Maine, and Manchester, New Hampshire. We come with uh, the experience and sophistication of a large national firm. We have the ability to handle virtually every form of business transaction. One of the things I think that's most unique about Bernstein Shore is this uh, drive to do what's right for clients. It is a really kind of a constant mantra around here. And our job is to facilitate the client's goals. And not everybody who gets out of law school understands that. Like many firms, we have a lot of very intelligent, hardworking, thoughtful attorneys. But I think what makes us different is our creativity, our focus on results. We want to understand the client and the client's particular issues that gets them what they need as opposed to generating a lot of fees. You don't end up with overstaffed teams, but we do have a lot of, of bench strength. So you can rely on the experience of someone who's done these things over and over. And you've got someone like me at a you know, cost-effective rate who's got a lot of energy to help really get the deal done. At, once you reach a certain level of capability and competence, then the, the next question is, well, do you like that person? You want to do business with people you like being with. If you're going to have to have an interaction with somebody, why not make it pleasant or interesting or both? We really like each other and we trust each other. And I think for a client, when your lawyers like each other, trust each other, and are, are willing to work really hard together, they're guaranteed to get a better solution in the end. We have gone through a very significant generational shift within the law firm. We've been very planful about having strong lawyers at all levels of the firm. While we've had to say goodbye to some tremendously important members of the firm, we have really great people behind them. And we are looking forward to the next 100 years. Well, thanks for that video about Bernstein Shore's startup. Sure, it's our pleasure. We're happy to participate as a sponsor in Greenlight, Maine. Uh, representing entrepreneurs and innovators has been part of our DNA for our 100 year uh, history, and we're pleased to be here. Well, great. I'm looking forward to that, and uh, we'll be back after this with our second presentation here on Greenlight, Maine. Hi, Ross here for Dice House Restaurant. Everyone's having meetings. Meeting about this, meetings about that, meeting about meetings. How ridiculous is that? Got a meeting? Meet at Dice Arts Broadway. Look at my chart. Dice Arts Broadway's got three meeting rooms. A big one, a bigger one, and an even bigger one. And the big one and the bigger one can combine to be even bigger than the even bigger one. How ridiculous is that? 
Great food, great service, and a great place for your meeting. Dice Arts Broadway. Big and bigger, bigger than even bigger. DiceArts.com. Ridiculous. When it comes to health insurance, what's your priority? Affordable office visits. A broad network of providers. Low monthly payments. You know what's important to you, but finding the right plan can seem so complicated. The good news is that we can walk you through it step by step. But you need to act soon. For affordable, quality health insurance, Maine Community Health Options, we can help. Welcome back to Greenlight Maine. As a reminder, you can learn much more about tonight's presenters on greenlightmaine.com. And we have our second presenter now for the evening. With us is Kate McAleer, CEO of Bixby & Co. Take it away, Kate. Hello. So just about four years ago at age 23, I decided to reinvent candy. Tired of mainstream candy bars filled with additives, preservatives, chemicals, essentially mass engineered food to get you addicted to junk. I set out in my mom's kitchen and I started prototyping all natural candy bars with real food ingredients, real chocolate, not compound. And um, early on decided that I wanted to pitch it to um, a, a big customer in the natural channel, which was Whole Foods Market. So I took a prototype that I made in my mom's kitchen, pitched it to Whole Foods, walked away with purchase orders, and from there started building this company from the ground up. So we started out with absolutely no machinery, making everything by hand. I have single-handedly um, wrapped about 100,000 candy bars. And uh, we've converted an ice factory that was sitting fallow in Rockland, Maine into a confectionery manufacturing space. Currently, we've grown from those original 28 stores to 70% of Whole Foods markets nationwide. We're in 1,600 stores with more slotted to come on board. So we're one of the leaders in this new category, which is natural, cha natural candy. We've been one of the innovators one of the first to market, and um, many of the predominant natural food retailers, such as Whole Foods, have taken great interest in our products. We're well poised to become a multi-million dollar confectionery manufacturing company located right here in Maine. That is, if you give the green light on granting us this vital working capital to help us scale and grow this business. Great job. Nancy, first question. Are you growing your business in just pipeline or is it all new doors? How's your business growing? Both. So we're growing within the stores we're already in and then we're also gaining more market share um, through distribution channels. Now, Des, one of your businesses was a food business. What kind of questions came to mind as you were listening to this? Yeah, I mean, I, I think marketing this is a pretty crowded field. By the way, nice job. Well done. Um, I'm, I'm curious in this somewhat crowded field of, of candy, how do you stand out? What makes you different? Absolutely. So we're all natural. One of our bars is going to become certified organic. So we have several certifications, non-GMO verified, gluten-free, kosher. We have vegan flavors, which are dairy-free alternatives. Um, but also our flavor profile and our unique innovative recipes. We don't use corn syrup. We don't use additives, preservatives. Um, you know, we use real chocolate, which is kind of unheard of in the candy market. So I think the taste and the texture and our unique flavor profiles set us apart. Okay. Tony, question from Kate, you. Great, great story. Um, as you look at the future expansion, are you going to have to think about the logistics and manufacturing in other parts of the country? And what are your initial thoughts in that regard? Well, currently our factory is sitting at about 30% capacity. So we have built up machinery uh, with a loan from Whole Foods Market and other, I won the Gorham Savings Bank $30,000 cash prize. Um, so we've built up this great manufacturing space. We have room to grow within that facility. And right now it's a matter of an influx of working capital to help us scale and get to the next level. So manufacturing is really not of concern at this stage. Okay, and we'll be back after this for the deliberations between the judges on the two companies who have presented this evening here on Greenlight Maine. See you then. Okay. I'm Sean Gorman, chairman of the board at LLB. My great-grandfather, LL, started the company over 100 years ago selling a single product, the Maine Hunting Shoe. His pioneering determination revolutionized the outdoor industry helping L.L. Bean become one of America's most beloved family-owned businesses. We've grown over the years, and we're still committed to developing innovative outdoor products.
If any of you in our television audience has a big idea, we encourage you to visit GreenlightMaine.com for a list of resources and information about starting your own business. Welcome back to Greenlight Maine. Have you been commenting yet on Twitter or Facebook? Well, it's now time to hear from our judges as to what they thought about tonight's presentations. Des, why don't you uh, take up the first one, good to go. What did you like about that presentation? Well, did a great job. I thought they represented their company really well. Um, I, I think there's a big upside in the category that they're in. Uh, and I like the balance of the team between the, the cooking gourmet food side mm. and the outdoor application side. Mm -hmm. Great. Nancy, what did you like about uh, the company and the presentation? I thought they did a terrific job. And what I really liked was the size of the prize, as you call it, $1.8 billion. I think there are loyal customers in that category mm -hmm. that if they hook them early, they'll keep them for a lifetime value. Right. So that, that builds value in a company when you've got lots of repeat customers. I believe so. Great. And then, Tony, what were your thoughts? What did you like about good to go Well, again, great presentation. Um, I think playing off what Nancy said, there are markets to expand in after that initial market. And I think that they've got an area for growth uh, that is, is quite broad. Mm -hmm. So they've only been around for a little bit more than a year. So lots of challenges still to go. What kind of rose to the top for you? As far as challenges, it, it may be uh, that there is so much there. Mm. And picking the right uh, spot to go after and scaling it in a profitable or at least a break-even way. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of market there to be covered. Right. Nancy, challenges? Uh, challenges around they've grown so fast, I have a concern that um, how patient their current retailers will be as they scope up their production to meet the current needs. Interesting. And Des, you had a food business as well. What kind of challenges did you see for the company? Well, they're in an enviable position of having lots of opportunities out there, but I think they, they really need to focus right now. What's their key constituency? How do mm -hmm. they really get that right? And then they can move from there. Okay. So now let's turn our attention to Bixby & Co., uh, also in the food category. What did you like about that presentation? Well, Kate represents her company really well. Obviously, very energetic, dynamic uh, it's a difficult category, and she seems to have carved out a nice niche in it in the way she's flavored her products and other ideas she's got. Mm -hmm. Nancy, what did you like about that? She's a terrific spokesman for her category. I think that the natural chocolate business is on, on the move. It's growing mm -hmm. quickly. Yeah. And I think she has really seized the day in that particular segment of business. Yeah, and, and since you've got lots of marketing background at Procter & Gamble, you want to just say, what did you like about the marketing approach that she's taken? I like the fact that she knows who her customer is, the organic natural food kind of a client, mm. and goes right after that directly with mm -hmm. her marketing. Great. Tony, what did you like about Bixby & Co.? Great presentation. She's very passionate about what she's doing, mm, and I absolutely. think that takes you a long way. Uh, on an operational side, I think the fact that she's got that much manufacturing capacity already is a really good stepping stone for mm -hmm. her. So she's poised to take advantage of the growth that she hopefully has ahead of her. Exactly. Great. And then challenges, um, what kind of things rose to your attention there? Well, I think just because of the market that she's in, there's a lot of competition. Mm. Just, you know, not everybody is going to pick that organic bar, but there's just competition for shelf space, and there are some big, big players in the market that she's trying to get into. Yeah, absolutely. She's definitely in there playing with lots and lots of big, big companies. What did you see, Nancy? I would agree with that. Differentiation of her marketing going forward is going to be interesting. Mm. Right now, her growth is predominantly pipeline growth, as we say, every new door is okay. new volume. Not just but, so she's adding new stores. Right. And so the real question is, what same store sales growth? Ah, That's the real question as you grow out your business. So she's going to have to make sure her marketing advances to yes. promote more same, stale, same, same so store, store sales. sales. Yes. Correct. <laughs> and Des, what did you see as challenges for Bixby & Co.? So she's obviously got traction. She's mm -hmm. got good customers out there. I, I think the next key management person she brings in is going to be really important to her. Mm. She's obviously got great skills in marketing and sales. Yeah. Who's the next position? Is it a CFO? Is it a plant manager? That's going to be key to her. Very interesting. Well, I'm sure the entrepreneurs are going to be very appreciative of your comments, uh, both on the air and probably off the air as well. Uh, so we'll be back in just a minute 
with the final choices of these judges about the two companies you've seen tonight here on Greenlight Maine. Don't go away. One of the things I think that's most unique about Bernstein Shore is this uh, drive to do what's right for clients. It is a really kind of a constant mantra around here. We have a lot of very intelligent, hardworking, thoughtful attorneys. But I think what makes us different is our creativity, our focus on results. I think for a client, when your lawyers are willing to work really hard together, they're guaranteed to get a better solution in the end. We hope you at home will support your favorite entrepreneur tonight by going to greenlightmain.com and clicking on their GoFundMe link. You can make a difference. Welcome back to Greenlight Maine, where you've heard two presentations tonight. You've heard the judges deliberate, and now it's time to find out who they are going to give the green light to. So judges, please pick up your cars and get ready to flip them and show who's going to get the green light. Go for it. That means good to go will be moving on to the finals, where 13 companies will be competing for a chance at $100,000 in cash. And whether or not you agree with tonight's judges, you can go to greenlightmain.com and vote with your hearts and your wallets for your favorite company. We hope you've enjoyed and been inspired by the talented entrepreneurs competing on Greenlight Maine. Got an idea yourself? Let's keep in touch online and keep growing Maine, one dream at a time. Greenlight Maine has been brought to you by Bernstein Shore, celebrating 100 years. Prize money for Greenlight Maine is provided by Maine Accelerates Growth through a grant by the Maine Community Foundation, stewards of charitable giving, helping donors help Maine. Outreach and community engagement in partnership with Maine Startup and Create Week, a conference worth skipping work for. Furniture for Greenlight Maine is provided by Thomas Mosier Furniture, handcrafted American furniture since 1972. Broadcast facilities provided by Nescom, the New England School of Communication at Husson University. Green light.